Hello and welcome to the show supported by Media Proxy. Now we haven't spoken to our next company uh, since November 2020, which seems a long time ago now. We were even sitting in our, our old studio at the time. And this year they've introduced Arcadia Central Station, a new FreeSpeak Edge base station, updates to their HelixNet, Trilogy, Mentor and Eclipse HX products, and much more. We really should have been talking to them more often, I think. Yeah, last time we talked about remote workflows and the rapid development of technology, who had been using it for a while and who was now using it, and what benefits products like Agent IC bring to their users. So today we're welcoming Justin MG from Clearcom to tell us about the new Arcadia and a recent event where it was front and centre for a very large live event broadcast throughout the US. Hi Justin, welcome to the show, good to see you. Good to see you too. I agree. It has been way too long. Thank you for having us back in. No, it's a pleasure. So as Matt mentioned there, you've developed Arcadia, Arcadia Central Station, I think. Tell us some more. Yeah, so Arcadia uh, Central Station is a pretty powerful device. Uh, it, it has a ton of extra endpoints that, that, uh, that brings together so many pieces of the ClearCom family. In fact, uh, if you look at just some of those endpoints where we allow you to connect FreeSpeak 2, 1.9 gigahertz and 2.4, as well as the newly released FreeSpeak Edge wireless bell pack, which is the five gigahertz flavor. It allows you to connect the legacy E1 transceivers, as well as our newer IP transceivers. It has interoperab uh, interoperability with Dante, so you can get up to 64 channels of audio to other third party mm -hmm. devices. It has on the IO on the back, GPIO for two-way radio connection, has up to four two-wire connections for your traditional Encore party line, and then it has up to eight four-wire connections for just your analog communications back and forth to other systems. It has a newly designed CCM, which is the web GUI that uh, people are so familiar with from ClearCom, as well as a touch display on the front panel for that user interface. And then the greatest thing is it now allows you to do up to 32 wireless bell packs at one time, unlike the FreeSpeak 2 base station that could only do 25. So is this a development of an existing product line or is this a product that's going to sit on top of the rest? Does it replace previous products? Where does it sit within your, within your, your range, your line? Well, if you go to a theater nowadays, you will notice that in the rack they have two devices. They have a FreeSpeak 2 base station, and then they'll have a HelixNet base station. Now, the FreeSpeak 2 is a strictly a wireless communication system that allows up to 25 bell packs. It is then connected to the HelixNet base station, and the HelixNet would then allow for a wired IP communication within a theater or a building. The problem with that system, even though it's a fantastic system that is used worldwide at, at most major events, the issue yeah. is that you cannot get a ton of communications or, or lines back and forth between them. So by having all of this merged into one central station, which is the Arcadia, we are able to, in effect, take two base stations out of the rack, reduce it down to just the Arcadia, and increase the amount of endpoints that that customer can have. So this is a pretty huge deal for those live events. Mm. Yeah, okay, makes sense. We. Um, we rattled off a, a list of new products and existing products uh, when we started, Justin. What are the main innovations that you've seen over the last year? Uh, as far as innovations uh, within the ClearCom family, obviously the Arcadia is the biggest deal that we've had, uh, but there's also been some other developments within our other product lines, some, some sustaining releases. But I think what's also the biggest innovation that we have added to our to our product line would be Station IC as well. Uh, I, I'm sure you're all familiar with Agent IC. I mean, it's an award-winning mm. product that allows you to connect to a communication system via your iPhone or Android. Well, Station IC now allows you to connect via your PC or Mac. And it's, it's really changed, especially because of COVID and because of this whole pandemic. It has completely revolutionized how people are able to communicate and remotely. So we're seeing a ton of people also communicating with Station IC from their home and they're directing shows or producing it without even taking their pajamas off. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So, so I mean, and, and that's a trend that we've seen, 
you know, growing actually the remote production thing. Are you able to identify any other trends that might be, let's say, emerging in the broadcast and, and, and live events in industry? I think one other trend that I personally have noticed is uh, an increase in the amount of endpoints that they need on site. Uh, okay. I think especially if you look at these live events, uh, whether it's a theater or a rock concert, doesn't matter. The production is increasing significantly. And it's to the point that you are seeing more people on site to support all of these complex systems that they're adding to a show which means they need more wireless belt packs or more wired belt packs. So if you look at Broadway as an example, or the West End as an example, traditionally 25 wireless belt packs was more than enough to make it through a show. Today, wow. they're wanting 30, 40, maybe even up to 50 wireless belt packs because their crew is growing so much to support these complex shows. So that's probably the right. most interesting trend that I've seen. So you mentioned there the Broadway shows, and I know there's a, a big thing with the, the licensing spectrum um, in the States. How's, how's that affecting people? Well, I'll tell you what, from a manufacturing standpoint, it has become increasingly difficult to support our customers who need more wireless communication, but don't want to do it with a two-way radio. Uh, doing it with a two-way radio is incredibly difficult and can make communicating uh, very difficult. So what we are finding so difficult as manufacturer and this is a universal problem it doesn't matter if it's clear um, one of the competitors or a wireless mic company where do you go when the fcc and all of these other government entities are auctioning off frequencies for the highest bidder and unfortunately for us it leaves us with very few options now that is exactly why we built free speak edge it is using five gigahertz as that frequency. And so five gigahertz, when you look at it worldwide, is actually a pretty wide spectrum. And what's so cool about FreeSpeak Edge, unlike FreeSpeak 2, is that we're actually able to go in and set the channels for every single transceiver. It's not like a traditional DEC system, which is frequency hopping and changing as you go along. Right. So we can yeah. go into a room and we can actually work with the IT department we say, hey, if you guys use 20, 20 channels in this room for your Wi-Fi, can you at least give us five or six channels? And then we can all work together. And so uh, it's, it's a very difficult situation, but we are finding ways to work with a difficult work. I guess you could say we're making lemonade out of some pretty nasty lemons. And it's, it's so far, <laughs> it's working out pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's, and that is fascinating. But I, I wonder what other... Cause, there are a lot of challenges. Can you can you give us any clues as to what other challenges you might face, especially in broadcast and, and theatre? Um, yeah, what what challenges are, you, are, are people facing when uh, thinking about their comms in in broadcast and, and, and theatre, and live events? Um, I, I think it kind of goes back to the last question. The challenge is being able to go into a room and set up a wireless system and play along with others. Um, you know, again, I, and I, I guess you could use like a, a, an arena or a stadium as an example. You're, you're gonna see when you walk into a massive room like that, a lot of access points. You're gonna find a lot of devices in five gigahertz, 2.4 and 1.9 gigahertz. Yeah. And so that's, that's the challenge in a wireless world is figuring out what's in the room, how you play along with it, and making sure that you don't step on each other's toes because everybody wants a successful production. It's just mm -hmm. how do you yeah. get there in a wireless world that is getting crammed down to so little uh, RF spectrum space. Mm. Yeah. And I think most, uh, well, every manufacturer is developing um, on the needs of what their customers are asking them for, aren't they? So what sort of solutions are you, are you hearing that your customers are looking for? I think the biggest thing that customers continue to look for outside of more wireless bell packs at a facility or for a show is the ability to continue ramping up the, the remote production, to be able to keep a director or a producer or some kind of staff member uh, at home or at an office without spending thousands of dollars for them to come on site days and days or weeks in advance. 
you know, it's still a huge deal production to have people on site. But if you're able to work on that production and do uh, run throughs and save thousands of dollars by, by delaying the arrival of a director or a producer, that's a pretty big deal. It saves a lot of money. So I think we're going to continue to see a trend, in my opinion, of shows or broadcast facilities increasing the amount of virtual comps, which is where Agent IC, Station IC, Arcadia, even our Eclipse frames come in. So at the beginning of the uh, of, of 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 our discussion of our chat, we we mentioned a a, a a large U.S. nationwide broadcast event that you were uh, instrumental in 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 making happen. What can you tell us about it? How did you work that? Well, uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, which is in the heartland of America, they have a massive uh, celebration of Fourth of July. Uh, I mean, we're all familiar with with how big America is into the July 4th holiday. Well, in St. Yeah. Louis, for the past 40 plus years, they've been putting on these massive concerts. You know, people like Elton John come in. I mean, big, big names come in and and hundreds of thousands of people come into St. Louis to see these these massive concerts. But what's also really big is this parade that they put on. Now, most parades, we all go, OK, not a big deal. But in St. Louis, right. for the past 40 years, they've yeah. been broadcasting it locally. And then recently, over the past eight to 10 years, they've increased that broadcast uh, nationally. And they've been syndicating it on several TV stations throughout the country. Well, at this event, yeah. I had the privilege of being able to meet up with the engineers and bring Arcadia and Free Speak 2. Because along the broadcast box, outside the, the truck, because the truck itself already has a matrix frame built into it. But outside, wireless is a pretty big deal for the directors, the field producers, yeah. those who are running the floats. They all have to be able to communicate but not use two-way radio. And so we brought Arcadia FreeSpeak 2. We had the audio engineers set it up so that they could learn how, it, how it's used. And nothing but great comments came from that event. Uh, and I, I personally have actually worked that parade in a previous life as a broadcast engineer. And we always had difficulty with wireless comms along the parade route. It went yeah. phenomenally. I, I could not be happier with how things went in Arcadia just sang beautifully. Now, if you wanted more information, by the way, about what we did and why, yeah. and even see some pictures, we actually have a blog post that I wrote up on our website at clearcom.com if, you, if you're interested in seeing more about that. Yeah, brilliant. We'll put a link in the description where people can uh, can find that. So just before we uh, finish off, Justin, two questions rolled into one, really. Uh, what can we expect from Clearcom in 2022? And what do you think the industry is going to look like in, say, two years' time? Well, the industry part is a tough one. Uh, when you consider that uh, the, the pandemic really turned us upside down, uh, did not, not only did it turn upside down Clearcom, but all of our partners and our customers uh, and the fact that the live entertainment industry is just now getting back to work as uh, is really a, a negative thing for the whole industry as a, you know, as a whole. But looking at ClearCom side though, outside of our customers that, that we care deeply for, uh, one of the most exciting things that's coming out in the next few months would be the integration of HelixNet into the Arcadia base station. And then further down the road, we do plan to also add Agent IC, Station IC, and then eventually, hopefully, to get the LQ connected back to the Arcadia base station. So there's a lot of development work that's already planned, and we're very excited to get that released to the market. Cool. Absolutely. Watch this space. We'll keep an eye on it, hopefully. Keep chatting to you and find out more. Thank you very much, Justin, for coming into the studio. And uh, you can visit clearcom.com for more information. We'll try and put a link into the blog, as previously mentioned. And thanks to Media Proxy for their continuing support of Kit Plus TV. And thanks to you for watching. We'll see you next time.